Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today at a different angle to do my Fairy Loot and Owl Crate unboxings. I don't know, I wanted to switch things up. I just wanted to have fun with these unboxings, and I came up with like an idea to not solely make it about the unboxings, I guess, for the videos, because editing those I hate doing, honestly, even though I love unboxing. So I figured it could be fun to do a more like fluid style of it where I unbox everything in a box in one go and then talk about the products after I'm done. I'm not sure. This might this might be terrible. It might be great, but I thought it could be a little bit more cohesive. It could cut down on my chitter chatter because we all know I chatter a lot and it might just be entertaining. I also wanted to mix this video a little bit with like organizing slash putting up like some of my Halloween decorations because we are officially in October. So this is a mishmash kind of video. Hopefully it's fun. I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to edit this. We'll figure that out after, especially considering I have a whole other unboxing video that I have half edited and never posted that would have to go up before this. So we have a we have a task to do today. But I have here the July and August boxes, I believe, for Owl Crate and Fairy Loot. I am a rep for both of these companies, which means basically that I get their boxes every single month just to unbox for myself. There's no monetary compensation aligned with it, but I unbox them and review them for you guys and we all have a good time and then they also both have given me discount codes that you guys can use on their websites. They apply for like different things so definitely check down in my description below. I link the websites, I link my discount code, and I'm not sure what else there is to say. I again have the July and August ones. I also have my September fairy loot but I don't have the September owl crate yet so we're gonna hold on that one. And then down here I have a special edition box, which this one is, I believe, the From Blood and Ash box from Fairy Loot, which I bought with my own money, so I'm very excited about that. Okay, I guess let's just kind of, let's get into it. I think that I'm going to listen to an audiobook while I unbox. Is that weird? I don't know. I'm listening to Arsenic and Adobo, and I'm really liking it so far. Oh yeah, my lighting keeps going in and out, so that's going to be fun to deal with because it's a rainy day today in Vegas. Ugh, clouds. The sun went away again. <sighs> I'm going to start with, I think, both of the boxes from July for Owlcrate and Fairy Loot, and then we'll talk about them. Yeah, I think that's a good flow. This is, I got this for my birthday, and it's probably my favorite birthday gift. I never thought I'd be into a box cutter, you know? I'm a knife kind of gal. This box cutter, love her. some good boxes uh right off the bat let's go over the owl crate one first so the theme for the month was potions and poisons and this was the little spoiler card it's just this cute little like you know 
witch reaching for her potions and poisons we don't know and this box was really really good so the book for the box was this poison heart by Kaylin Bayron and I actually had seen this this is a book that I've been looking forward to it has like just a really saturated version of the cover versus the original version and then it's obviously signed and then we have a beautiful little like rose foil design on the actual hardcover and the most stunning just like cottage core style witchy little room with just tons of plants everywhere so let me read you the summary is it weird that I'm starting with a book I just feel like you already saw me open it you know I don't know so strange magic blooms behind a poison gate Brisset has a gift with a single touch she can grow plants from tiny seeds to rich blooms when Brisset's aunt dies and wills her a dilapidated estate in rural New York Brie and her her parents hope that surrounded by plants and flowers she will finally learn to control her gift but their new home is sinister in ways they never expected it comes with a mysterious set of instructions a walled garden filled with the deadliest botanicals in the world and generations of secrets there is more to Bree's sudden inheritance than she could have imagined and she's determined to uncover it from the best-selling author of Cinderella is dead I don't know like kind of half thriller half fun witchy time seems more thrillery to me after reading the summary but I originally assumed it was gonna be way more just like a cottage core vibe then let's just go over the things in the box. So the first thing is the Owlcrate TBR jar. So that's what they want you to do with this. That was designed by Lichen and Limestone with vintage apothecary aesthetics. And it's beautiful. It came in this like stunning box, which you guys know I keep my boxes. And then it's just like a porcelain thick apothecary style jar. And I'm obsessed because it's called a Bibliophile Brew. Like, like Brittany the Bibliophile, I'm just saying. It says curses reader's blocks. Take one with experiencing literary indecisiveness and then it says let Owlcrate Apothecary decide your fictional fate. I actually think this is really cute and I've been thinking about starting a bit of a TBR jar besides the fact that this is going to look amazing as Halloween decoration on my shelves and in general. I actually might use it for what they want us to use it for. Following the apothecary theme we actually have a bubble elixir from Fiction Bath Co and it's watermelon and clementine and it's just a really pretty like apothecary style bottle that I'm assuming it's just bubbles. Yeah bubble bath. I tried to sniff it because I'm starting to smell a lot more but I, like I smell like one in ten things I swear. <sighs> I can smell like the watermelon and soap. I have no other way to describe it. Like the things that I do smell are so strange, so it probably doesn't smell like that, but I'm into it either way because I love bubble baths. I like baths in general. I wasn't sure what this was at all, but it's called Fenburn's Fatal Frozen Delicacies, and it's apparently like a popsicle maker and holder. So it's a popsicle mold, and then you, it was designed by Paperback Bones, so you create popsicles in this and then you can like eat it straight out of it almost like an otter pop which I think is pretty cool because I love otter pops so I'll I mean I feel like all you'd really have to do is freeze some juice right I have orange juice I can try this out later it may be October in Vegas but trust me I'm dying of heat still so then we have this really cute little hand sanitizer holder and it comes with the bottle already inside the one that would fit this little holder so I'm assuming you just unscrew it and fill it with whatever hand sanitizer you use so I thought that was really cool I actually have been like anchoring these to every purse that I use regularly just because I don't know I just I like to stay clean I guess oh yeah so they just said that in general it's a bottle keychain and it was created by blissfully bookish co and that if you want to stick with medicinal vibes so just filling it with hand sanitizer that's honestly what I assumed it was made for but I guess I just saw the shape. You could put lotion in it too, I guess. Oh, that actually would be really helpful. Then, this is so cute. We got a little enamel bookmark that was designed by Herbareal, and it is like one of those chain bookmarks, and it has like a drink me drink and an eat me cookie from Alice in Wonderland. How do you guys feel about like chain, like, bookmarks because I feel mixed about the whole thing I don't I don't know why I just feel like I never this was never my favorite form of a bookmark but the more I think about it the more I think this is actually so easy and I don't know why I had so much against it I don't know let me know this one's really cute though so I think maybe I don't like them because I don't know how to store them you know like when they're not in a book how do you store them you can't put them up in a mug like I do with most of mine not sure and then we have this lovely little tapestry cloth tapestry that has Poison Garden Los Lagos with tons of pretty just flowers and plants and like their, I guess, scientific 
apothecary style names, but it's created with Amy Mac illustration and it is considered a tea towel inspired by Labyrinth Lost. I never use these as actual tea towels, I just think that they're cuter as tapestries. If you guys never knew what you wanted to use it for either, if you didn't like tea towels, I suggest tapestries. I'm going to use this as a tapestry in my Halloween decorations in this room. I just feel like it, it fits the vibe. I'm going for an apothecary vibe. So this was a very appropriate box for that. We just have the little enamel pin that goes along with the book and it's really cool. It looks like an elixir with like an anatomical heart inside and keys crisscrossing through it. And it was made in collaboration with Icy Designs. As for the extras that there was in here, there is a little pamphlet for Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. I haven't heard of that, but I'm out of the loop. And then we have, obviously, the pamphlet, which has, as usual, like, the interview with the author, the original cover versus the one that they gave us, an interview with a vendor, some more book recommendations, and the Spotify playlist, which is within the Poison Garden. So if you want to scan that, here is that for you. The theme for next month is going to be Dark Academia, which I'm so excited about, because like I said, that's kind of like the whole vibe that I want for my Halloween decorations, because most of mine are still in store. Storage. That's what we're gonna be going for. I don't know if I'm in focus. Let's move on over to the fairy loot box. Oh, I feel like it's pretty obvious, but my favorite item in Owlcrate was this jar. It's so high quality and it's really pretty. I like it a lot. It's, it's handy too. So now for fairy loot, the theme is Tales Were Told and it has this just stunning like Asian inspired artwork. She's just beautiful. It looks ethereal. The book inside of this one, very in line with this spoiler card, which by the way, bookmark, is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This was actually on my most anticipated books for the year originally. I'm not sure if it was in the video, but this is one that I've been anticipating all year. And look at these sprayed edges. Like what the heck, right? And then it's the special edition cover. And I do like the original cover quite a bit. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I think it's really stunning, but this is also very, very pretty. Uh, it has artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket and foiling on on the actual hardcover is so so beautiful so it's just stunning and then obviously signed by the author as well right here and let me just read you the summary it says, Shiori Anma, the only princess of Kiara, has a secret. Forbidden magic runs in her veins, and on the morning of her betrothal cer ceremony, Shiori loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted, but it also catches the attention of Raikama, her stepmother. A sorceress in her own right, Raikama banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes and warning Shiori that she must speak of it to no one, for with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to contain no matter what it costs. It just, it sounds so cool. I remember when I first heard the summary for this, I didn't know the plot line of her brothers being turned into cranes and every word she speaks killing one of them, so that is really it's really cool. I'm very excited about this. And then we do have just like a little character print with the letter from the author on the back. Let's just talk uh, about the other stuff in the box as well. First and foremost, I want to talk about the book sleeve. This is so cool. Fairy Loop tends to make really nice book sleeves, and I think it's actually really cool because it definitely protects the book more, but it's so stunning. It's actually just artwork from... what's it called? I'm blanking. From what's it called? You know, what's it called? From... Oh yeah, <laughs> from the Spin the Dawn series, and it was actually made in collaboration with Rosie Thorne's 88, which I saw, I love Rosie Thorne's artwork, it's like paper craft. I, I want one of her pieces one day. I am very excited to have it printed on a book sleeve for now. And then we do have a little character print with like some foiling on it, and this is from the Star Touch Queen series by Roshni Shakshi. I didn't catch that right away. I don't know why I imagined her with like straight black hair. That's on me. You know, you know when you get like an idea of what a character looks like in your head and then you just like are very persistent to believe that that's exactly how they're supposed to look like? She's stunning. She's beautiful. I love her. I don't know where I got the straight black hair from, but that's that's just how I imagined her. This is still really pretty. I don't want you to think that I don't like it. I do. I'm just having a time coming to terms with my beliefs being incorrect, and that's okay. That's okay. As long as I can accept it. Then we also have an umbrella in here, which I debated opening, but uh, ultimately 
I'm too superstitious, I, I can't bring that bad luck on myself. And it's just like a cool like deck of cards style umbrella. I'm sure that it's based off of, oh, what's it called? It's red and black. Is it behind me? What's it called? You know, it actually might be right here. Yep, Heartless. So based off of the Heartless, of Heartless, the book, which is based off of Alice in Wonderland. It's like the origin story of the Red Queen, or the Queen of Hearts. We also have some Cinderella is Dead socks. I still haven't read that, and it's actually interesting now that I know that this Poison Heart is written by the same author, but I do like Fairy Loot socks. They're really thick and nice. This is good for, like, sleep, in my opinion, or, like, a really big pair of boots, but they're a little bit too big for me to wear with boots. They'll, like, rub around. I have smaller feet, I guess. Now, the most exciting part for me from this box is definitely this tin. It's it's a Sarah J. Mass inspired tin. I'm assuming, uh, like, a Court of Thorns and Roses inspired. Yep, and it was designed with Chatty Nora, and it's so, so stunning. It just is, like, a beautiful soft blue. It has, like, a moon on the top, and the quote that they chose for the back is, Be glad of your human heart. Pity those who don't feel anything at all, which is a great quote. And then, if you open it, there's the little bat wings. I just, I love these tins. I still haven't really found a great use for them. I should keep rings in them. I just want to find like a crafty kind of way to like to use this like the craft thing that I have in my book room normally that would go well in these but I haven't found it yet. I don't know maybe I should put those string bookmarks in there. Who knows? Still I love it. You guys know I'm a huge fan of A Court of Thorns and Roses. So then we have the two tarot cards for the month which are King of Wands and Queen of Wands and they are inspired by Caraval. And that's honestly you look at them and they look like Caraval characters. But when I first was reading the spoiler card I read that these were inspired by Cinderella is Dead and I was like that's that can't be right. But I'd been I'd been reading the above line that had to do with the socks. So that's on me. Oh my god, it's getting like hot hot in here. I might have to turn on the fan before we go into the next set of boxes. Let's talk about the fairy scoop real quick. It just has it feels thicker than usual. The interview with the author, the exclusive details of the book that we got, and then the theme for the month of August, which is Lovestruck. I won't read you the details of what's in Lovestruck because obviously we're about to open it. And then like I said, we're going to be organizing all this at the end, and I find that satisfying, so I hope you do too, because otherwise this video might be very boring for you. Sorry. I'm going to get water. Now for this pile over here, I kind of liked listening to my audiobook while it went, so I'm going to do that again. Was the book right on top? Oh, it's an arc. Wait, this arc is so cute. Oh, this is cute. Ooh, I like this better than the other one. I'm gonna change out my pee and play. box this time around for no particular reason. I just felt like it. It is missing one thing, my box anyways. I'm not sure if all of them are and maybe it's corrected in like their following box like they have done in the past. The theme for the month is Lovestruck and it's just like a really cute 
couple. Then the things that are in here that I did get are really cool. We got an arc in this one and it's After Love by Tanya Byrne. I know barely anything about this except for the tagline right here that says not even death will tear them apart and the stunning colors. I love this like dark dark navy blue and like violet indigo kind of no no violet definitely violet color with like this dark pink. It just looks so good together. So let's read the back. It says car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is the snap of breaking glass as the windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars but she made it. She's still here or is she? This New Year's Eve Ash gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers to take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love Poppy and she will do anything to see her again even if it means they only get a few more days together dead or alive. Which sounds really good. Sounds like a great read for October. Just saying. Like romantic but also spooky. Love it. That was the first thing. Then there's a little pencil case that says the world is wild with untamed things by Amanda Joy. I like the shape of this one. It just feels a little bit more belled out but that could be my imagination. It's just is really pretty. Really high quality. The zipper is awesome. I think that Fairy Loot just always has very high quality items in their boxes. Quote is from A River of Royal Blood. We have a little pin in one of these cute little bags which you know I keep and it's a stamp pin by Filfira Moon Designs which I love. I love her pin company. I have a few pins from her that I've bought um so it's really cool to see her pair or teamed up with Fairy Loot and it's a Caraval pin. I love these stamp style pins ever since what was it that was doing this? Blissfully Bookish maybe? They had like a whole year of like stamp pins, destination pins is what they called them, and I've been obsessed with that style ever since, but it was only for like subscribers at the time, so they don't have them still for sale. I never got any. The tarot cards as well are Carabao, so they're uh, Scarlet and Angel? Not Angel, was that the other guy? I'm not sure. I need a refresh on this, but it's the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles, and I actually really like how glowy these ones look. There's a pin flag in this one, and I love the coloring on this. I honestly thought it was going to be inspired by, uh, what's that? City of Brass, but like the UK editions, but it's actually not. It's inspired by Violet Delights. So these Violet Delights by Chloe Gong. <laughs> and it's just stunning. I feel like I want to switch out one of my pin flags now that I have up there just for this one because I think that this is just much more my aesthetic. So I'm a big user of the pin flags. I actually, I enjoy them. I've recently put all my pins onto flags and it just looks so cool to look at. <laughs> Never mind, that's a different topic. And it's created by Blanca Design. Now let's just talk about the things that came in the bag. So obviously we have the bookmark that matches up with the spoiler card very cute. We have a character print from the character in the book and the letter from the author, and we have the book itself, which stunning book, like the orange with like the little suns that remind me of Tangled on the sprayed edges. I'm into this whole like autumn feel. It gives me a uh, sorcery of, not sorcery of thorns, what was the other book that she wrote? By Margaret Rogerson? An Enchantment of Ravens. It just gave me those vibes because that has to do with like a fey autumn prince. Okay, so when you open it up, obviously it is signed by the author, which is really cool, and then it's stunning on the inside. Like, the way that they did the stenciling with that just dark orange, I feel like I'm gonna end up leaving this book naked. It's just so, so pretty. And then <laughs> the artwork though on the reverse of the dust jacket, and it probably has more to do with the artists themselves, but you're gonna tell me that those two boys, those two, those two like elvish, feyish boys do not remind you of Rowan and Resand? Because they remind me of them. They remind me of them. That could just be, I don't know, my bias. So let's read the summary. So it says, go to the Seely Court. Find the queen's secret portal to enter the most dangerous place in fairy. Find my sister and rescue her from a power-hungry king at child's play. Brie would do anything before making a deal with the fae. Death is preferable to the vicious schemes, but when her sister is taken by the sadistic king of the unseelie court, there is nothing Brie wouldn't do to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from the rival seelie court. Gaining unfettered access to the seelie court is easier said than done. Brie's only choice is to pose as a potential bride for Prince Ronin. I didn't know that that was going to be a thing, but... Reminds me of someone else. The Seelie Prince, who's not quite as wicked as she once thought, unwilling to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of unseely misfits with their own secret agenda. But as Bree spends time with her mysterious leader, Finn, she finds him, she finds herself struggling to resist his seductive charm. Caught between two dangerous courts, Bree must decide who to trust with her loyalty and with her heart. 
I'm sure it's all a coincidence, you know, but it's just a funny coincidence and I'm just biased, so. It does sound good though. It sounds like something that when I'm in a fantasy mood again, it's gonna be one of the first things I pick up. And then we have the interview with Lexi Ryan, which is the author, and then the details of our exclusive book, and then the theme for the month of September, which is going to be Uprising. Looks really good. I like the cover art for that. So my favorite thing in this box was definitely the pin flag. Sorry, hands down. So the thing that I am missing in this one, which I'm not sure if like everyone is, but it's the literary tray, which is fine because I, I wouldn't use it right now anyways, probably, but it is done by Stella Bookish Art and has a quote from Cemetery Boys, which I feel like it would be really cute. But now onto Owl Crate, and the theme, again, was Dark Academia. This spoiler card is everything. Like, I love, like, the school aesthetic. I love the, the skeletons and bones. I don't know. I think it's really cool. I'm just gonna go in the order that it's on here in. We have a book sleeve inspired by the Raven Boys, designed by Dree Gomez. It's a very stunning book sleeve. Very stunning artwork on it. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of the Raven Boys. I just never finish it for personal reasons, not because I didn't like it. I can still appreciate that this is really stunning artwork. And it's like your classic book sleeve. Just like cloth and floppy and open on the top. Then we have the collectible book tin that Forensic and Flowers was collaborated with in. This is stunning. This is... I did not expect this to be in this box. It's so beautiful. It's the third edition, which is White London, which means that I think, is it Black London that's left? Is that what it's called? I'm excited to see what they do with that one, but this is so beautiful. It's just white, like how White London is supposed to be inspired with, and then the book is The Someday King, Magic Restored, and then the red that they used, it bounces so perfectly off of the white. And the inside quote is my favorite part because it says, and then at last the world breathed in. And I just, this is, uh, this is everything. Like this is beautiful. And then on the back it says, on this ock, which I don't remember that one was for. Either way, I love this. This is hands down my favorite book tin yet. They keep one-upping themselves, so I'm really excited to see how the black one looks. I feel like this might be my favorite, though. I just love how the white and the red look. It reminds me of that planet in Star Wars. You know, the white planet with the cute little, like, arctic foxes, and when you run up the dust, it turns red. I don't know. It's really cool. This had a lot of stuff in it. Uh, we have an Ellingham Academy brew blended by Riddle's Tea Shop, and it is a decaf brew that's gluten-free, nut-free, and dairy-free, and it has like chamomile, rose hips, hibiscus, apple pieces, natural strawberry flavor, natural vanilla, strawberries, and raspberry leaves. Reminds me of summer, in all honesty. So I'm excited to try it out. I've been telling myself I want to drink more decaf things, because I don't really use the things for caffeine anyways, so I don't like the idea of decaf, but it's just the idea of it, not like the actual. I love caffeine, but it doesn't give me the caffeine feels, if that makes sense. A reading kit that was inspired by If We Were Villains and done in collaboration with Paperback Bones. This is so cool. It's like a little book, and it says, Per Aspera Ad Astra, a Delecker Classical Conservatory, and then the back says, We were always surrounded by books and words and poetry, all the fierce passions of the world, bound in leather and vellum. It's very pretty. I haven't read that book. I feel like I'd really like it though. And on the inside we have just little leaf papers, a pen, post-its, and really cool like galaxy gray and white themed tabbies. I think this is such a cool idea. I wish that there was like a way to know that you could have refills of all of this stuff once you use it up. I go through tabs pretty quickly, but this idea is so cool. Just like have it all in one place and I just, I like this a lot. This is a really cool thing. This is really cool. It's cool. We got a stamp. And this was done in collaboration with Little Inkling Designs. I've always wanted a stamp that says like, so it says from the library of and then you'll write in your own name but I do have ink and now I just kind of like want to stamp all of my favorite books. This would be really good for uh, journaling as well if you don't like putting things in your books. I have officially gone over that hump, but only if I really love the book. <laughs> now this thing, this next thing, I'm pretty sure it's what they talk about next, really confused me until I completely pulled it out, but it is a bookmark and it's like a very delicate metal bookmark done in collaboration with Paperback Bones and the quote is from The Secret History. I love this quote. This is so accurate. So it says, it is better to know one book intimately than a hundred superficially. And I feel like that's such a good thing to hear being in like the book-ish world, so book talk, I'm assuming, uh, book two, like bookstagram, it's all about like how much you're reading and have you read everything that is currently out yet. And we like 
I don't know, we don't stop to smell the roses, or I don't anymore. And I feel like that's where I'm trying to go back to in my roots, and I just really liked seeing that quote because it's true. It's such a different feeling to know one book backwards and forwards than to read a hundred that I barely remember the characters names of, you know? We're going on a journey, we're going on a journey of a reading journey. The actual bookmark itself is really pretty, it gives me like Greekish vibes, just like with the artwork and stuff, and then it has the same quote along the side, and then the tassel. I thought it was an ornament for a minute. Well, okay, when I first saw it, the way that the metal ends made it look like earrings. It's not earrings. Still don't know how to store this kind of bookmark either, but that's fine. That's for another time. And now let's talk about the stuff that has to do with a book because I'm so excited about the book that came in this box. That was all the things, right? Yep. And that's A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is the letter from the author. And then we have book. They changed the cover from like the dark purple to this beautiful white with like periwinkle flowers and this stunning like foily silver sprayed edges. I am obsessed with it and I'm obsessed with it even more when you open it up because it's all black with like the silver and you know author page signature. Then when you see it naked it has like the Ouija board thimble thing and the coolest part is I noticed that when you look at the reverse artwork on the dust jacket it's like another dust jacket so you could just flip it around if you wanted more of a dark aesthetic with this and I think that I will flip it around because as much as I love the beautiful white, I love this. This is such a cool idea. I never want to take my dust jackets off completely from books, so to have a, like artwork on the reverse is really cool. I just never want to hang it anywhere because then my book would be naked. I feel like it would be neat to see it turn more into this where it's like just an alternate dust jacket that you can flip around as you please. I think that could be something cool, but I'm not sure, you know? I like that they did it. Oh, let's, let's read you the inside. Uh, I've been looking forward to this book all year, so I'm, I'm hyped. So it says, Felicity Morrow is back at the Dalloway School. Perched in the Catskill Mountains, the centuries-old ivy-covered campus was home until the tragic death of her girlfriend. Now, after a year away, she's returned to finish high school. She even has her old room in Godwin House, the exclusive dormitory rumored to be haunted by the spirits of five Dalloway students. Girls, some say, were witches. The Dalloway Five all died mysteriously, one after another, right on Godwin grounds. Witchcraft is woven into Dalloway's past. The school doesn't talk about it, but the students do. In secret rooms and shadowy corners, girls convene, and before her girlfriend died, Felicity, Felicity, <laughs> Felicity was drawn to the dark. She's determined to leave that behind now, but it's hard when Dalloway's occult history is everywhere, and when the new girl won't let her forget. It's Ellis Haley's first year at Dalloway, and she has already amassed a loyal following. A prodigy novelist at 17, Ellis is a so-called method writer. She's eccentric and brilliant, and Felicity can't shake the pull she feels to her. So when Ellis asks Felicity to help her research the Dalloway Five for her second book, Felicity can't say no. Given her history with the arcane, Felicity is the perfect resource, and when history begins to repeat itself, Felicity will have to face the darkness in Dalloway and in herself. I expected this to be way more of like a school of witchcraft. I didn't realize it was going to be a normal school that has like an occult kind of past. That's really cool. Then the pin that goes along with it is this stunning like typewriter pin that says ex sign Scientia Ultio and done with icy designs. I just I love it so much. It's the same quote that I think was on the Ouija board thimble thing. It's not a thimble, but that's what I'm calling it. And then we have the pamphlet, which has the letter from the author, the original book cover versus theirs, uh, the book recommendations, an interview with a vendor, and the Spotify playlist, which is the Someday King. So, and the theme for September is Haunted Hearts. I'm so excited about that. So, that's it. Uh, now, normally that's kind of where we end it. Oh, obviously, this was my favorite thing. This was my favorite thing in that box and in general, I think. But this, Owlcrate actually, I'm sorry for you, Like, I love them equally in different ways, but Owlcrate showed up this time. I think that they just fit my aesthetic currently because I'm looking for apothecary style, dark academia style things for decorations, so it's not really Fairy Loot's fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we're gonna organize. We're gonna organize all the stuff away. There's tons of stuff in front of me and maybe put some things into my shelves. I'm not sure if I want to do the full Halloween decoration part. I think that might be boring, but who knows? It might still happen, so stay tuned. I need more water though. Uh, we're going to be organizing everything first into piles, like paper craft stuff and uh, things that go into like those drawers and things that go in the kitchen and the books themselves. And then I'll bring out the binders that I use to organize everything into. So that's what we shall start at. And I'm gonna listen to my audiobook while it goes. Romance was the last thing on my mind.
everything's organized into little piles but I always organize the books things that I like have set places for so like specifically this book tin merch that I'm not really sure where it goes normally goes in drawers towards the end and then I always put the paper stuff into like the right sizing orders because I have different sleeves for different paper stuff so now let's just maybe get the pin stuff well no okay we'll do the the binder stuff with all the paper things first so let me grab those this is one of the secret books from Fairy Loot that I keep all of the bookmarks in. So we can just kind of toss those right in there, get those out of the way. And then we have like a million other binders. We have my big boy binder, we have my tarot card binder, and we have my tall boys binder. I guess that's, I've never named them like this before, but that's what they'll be called. So yeah, this one has, I think, four by six slots. So I'll organize, I'm running out of space in it, honestly, so I'll find some space and then put these ones away. I used to try to be more organized about this, but as I started to run out of space, I kind of had to be a little bit more scattered. And if you see like these, these are actually ones that I made to fit this size. So they always kind of like hang a little loose. So I had to put it between everything. Honestly, I'm going to redo this one day. So I guess for right now, let me just put them away. I like keeping them like this because I know that whenever I do have like a more permanent place that I'm living, I want to make like cool art walls in my book rooms and this will be very, very helpful at that point. So that's that. She's bulging. And the tarot card one is the easiest because it's always in the right order. This is my Owl Crate Pin Flag 2.0. Uh, I had another one, but I filled it up completely. So these are always the Owl Crate monthly pins. I just thought it was nice to keep them all together. I don't know why. Makes sense in my head, I guess. Perfect. So that's all good until the next month's pin comes along. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the fairy loot unboxing. Okay, we'll do that in a moment. I just want to get all this out of the way, out of the way first. And I do kind of want to use this pin flag for some of the pins, especially like this one. Um, I brought over some of mine that don't really have a home, so we'll put that away and then I can hang it up. This is kind of whatever. I'm missing a lot of backings because I'm using them for Disney pins because I misplaced all my Disney pin backings and those got hung up recently. This is as good as it's gonna get. I think it's pretty cute though to kind of keep with like a gold theme. And now, because I've been kind of collecting paper craft things, these get thrown into like any of the boxes. I'm gonna just sort away all of like the tiny bookish things into drawers and be right back. So most everything is cleared away. These are gonna be put on the shelf. These I still don't know where to put and these I need to organize into the shelves. Really quick though, I wanted to 
Open this up. These got shipped out pretty late because they were having, I think, supplier issues. This is worth it. Oh my god, these are so pretty. <sighs> the newest book, The Crown of Gilded Bones. And they're supposed to be really stunning naked. That's why I got them, honestly. I didn't even think they'd have dust jackets. I thought this is what was gonna be on it, but that's me maybe being dumb. Oh my goodness, the edges from Blood and Ash. Oh my goodness, whoa, 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 whoa. Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. Why do they do this one differently? And the other two the exact same. Well, it goes like this, I guess. Still, odd, right? Still beautiful, like very, very pretty. I'm still very happy I got them. I love how they look on the sides. Let's just move over to decorating the shelves. Thank you. 